Great, so today we're going to talk about section 7.4 and 7.5, geometric mean and proportions in triangles. All right, so we're going to start with geometric mean. And for geometric mean, it is two positive numbers, A and B. It's going to be a square root. We're always going to be dealing with square roots when you see the words geometric mean. Okay. It comes from a proportion, A over X equals X over B, where A and B are given to you as numbers, and X is the geometric mean. Okay. So X squared equals A times B. That's what I would get if I cross multiply here. And to solve that, to get rid of this squared part, we square root both sides. So that's where this comes from. You can either set up the proportion every single time, or you're more than welcome to say, okay, I know the geometric mean is going to be the square root of these two numbers. So if we're looking at 16 and 48, I know my geometric mean x is going to equal the square root of 16 times 48. Now this may be a perfect square when I multiply them, or it may not be. And instead of taking the time to calculate it, I'm just gonna go ahead and break stuff down. I know that 16 is four times four, and 48, the first thing I think of is 16 times three, okay? Four times four, breaks down and I can break down 16 again the 3 does not break down but I want to keep bringing him down so that I don't lose sight of him all right the twos are done 4 breaks down at 2 times 2 and again this guy 2 times 2 and we'll bring the 3 down to share now, when you're finding square roots and putting it in the simplest radical form, you want to find buddies or pairs, okay? I've got a pair of two, so I'm going to write down that number, okay? I've got another pair of two, so we're going to multiply with the two I already got out of there. I've got another pair of two, so we're going to multiply again. Another pair of two, so we're going to multiply again. This three does not have a buddy, so he gets to go back under the radical. Well, what is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, or in other words, 2 to the fourth power? Well, we get 16 square root of 3. So the geometric mean between 16 and 48 is 16 square root of 3. I'm going to walk you through one more and then give you guys a chance to do two on your own. All right, this first one, 16 and 18. Again, I'm going to start with square root 16 times 18, and we'll break it down. Now, I chose to do 4 and 4 last time, but it doesn't have to be. We could have started as 8 times 2. And this one, I'm going to do 9 times 2. Any two factors you can come up with, that's where you start. It doesn't have to match mine. All right, so 8 breaks down 4 times 2. Bring down the other guy. 9 breaks down as 3 times 3. Bring down the 2. All right, I still have the 4 that needs to come down and be broken up. And then I'm going to bring everybody else back down. Okay, so what do I have pairs of? Well, I have a pair of twos here, a pair of twos here, and a pair of threes. So again, when I go to write this down, I'm going to answer the question, what do I have a pair of? I have a pair of twos. Okay, I have another pair of twos that gets multiplied. And I have a pair of threes. My lone two goes back under the radical. So 2 times 2 is 4, 4 times 3 is 12, so we get 12 square roots of 2 as my geometric mean. Alright, try finding the geometric mean between 12 and 27, and then find the geometric mean between 18 and 54. You could end up with perfect squares, what that means is your answer does not always have to have a radical with it. Okay, your answer to number 2 is 18, no more radical, it's a perfect square. Everything comes out, but in number three, you get 18 square roots of three. All right, so that was all section 7.4, and 7.5 goes back into setting up your proportions in triangles. So here is the first proportion in triangle that we're going to talk about. There's three different diagrams in this section, and here is the first one. It says that if you have RS parallel to xy. So we've seen this diagram before. If these lines are parallel, we are able to set up the proportion qr, this side length, divided by rq, this side length, is in proportion to ys, this side length, over sq, this side length. Now, 
What I always tell you guys to do is think of that middle line as an equal sign or a fraction bar because really you're going to put this side here divided by this side equal to this side divided by this side. So there's that middle fraction bar here that you just put the numbers in proportion to. So let's try some with numbers. There are two examples here. They're different worded. They're worded differently. The first one is let's solve for x or find the length of kl, which will be our variable. And I'm going to go ahead and label x like so. So if I have my little fraction bar, okay, I can set 18 over x. 18 divided by x should equal the other side, 24 over 44. So here's my proportion now, and we can cross multiply. And when you cross multiply, you get 792 equals 24x, and then x equals 33. Now, the second one is not asking us to find the side length. It's asking us to kind of do the converse, determine if they're parallel. Well, if they're parallel, then they should be proportional, our side lengths. Okay, so we're going to set up the proportion and see, are they proportional? So 36 over 80 should equal 18 over 38. So there's two things you can do from here. You can actually cross multiply and see if they equal out. So if you do cross multiply these numbers, you should get that 1368 is equal to 1440. Well, looking at those numbers, we know they're not equal when you cross multiply. So therefore, are these parallel? No, because they are not proportional. You can also simplify your fractions and see if they have the same scale factor. And if they have the same scale factor, then they are proportional. But I think it might be just easier to cross multiply and find if those two numbers are equal. That determines parallel. All right, so this one's a little bit different. Notice that I'm given the bases of these triangles instead of given the other side. So it doesn't really go with the theorem we were just talking about. But I can still draw this out as two separate triangles just to make sure we're doing this right. So I've got 12 and x. And then be careful when you do the second one, this whole side is not 12. It's 12 plus 12. It's the whole thing. So we actually get 24 over and then 16 for my base. So looking at this, I've actually got a side angle side similarity situation back from section 7.3. So I can set up a proportion and solve that way. So 12 goes with 24, just like x goes with 16. And when I solve this, we get that 192 is equal to 24x, or x equals 8. All right, so here's the second type of diagram or theorem that we're going to talk about. Obviously, this is not really in a triangle, but if you can imagine, if I would just connect that, we do have a triangle situation going on, and we have parallel lines. Um, so let's take a look. This one says if line A is parallel, okay, this line here is parallel, so line B this middle line, and that's also parallel to line C. So we have three parallel lines happening there. Then we can say this proportion, that AB, this length in between that set of parallels, divided by this length, should equal in proportion to this side between the same parallel lines. Between A and B, it should be proportional to in between B and C. So really, once again, if you imagine the center parallel line as your fraction bar, okay, then you can set this over this. And same with the other side. So just visualize that middle parallel line as your fraction bar. So here are two examples. Okay, This one, obviously, the first one, we're finding the length of AB, but we flipped it, so now it's on its side. So here's that middle one. So if you kind of tilt your head to the side, you can see we can do the, uh, the proportion of 24 over 32 equals 27 over x. So you can start on that and cross multiply. When you cross multiply, you get 864 is equal to 24x. Divide out and you should get x to equal 33. 
36, or the length of AB is 36. Make sure you are reading. Sometimes it actually wants this whole length. So not only do you have to find X, you have to plug it back in and add, add it up. So go ahead and pause and find the length of AB in this diagram. Okay, so you guys have done your work. You set up your proportions. You use the center line as your fraction bar. So you have 16 with X and then 15 with 18. And you should end up with a decimal. It's okay, you got it right. X equals 19.2. All right, last um, our theorem we're going to talk about for this, or diagram we're going to really pick apart, is this one. If AD, the ray AD bisects angle CAB, here we are, ray AD bisecting one of my angles, making these two congruent, then I know I can set up the proportion CD, so the base over here, is equal to the base over here, just like my side is equal to the other side. We'll do that in blue so it stands out. So green with green, blue with blue. So if we look at this example, I'm going to set this up. Here's my bisector. Okay, I'm going to set this up that my base is X and 3 go together. So x over 3 equals, and then I'll do my sides together, 8 over 5. Okay? When you solve this, again, you're going to get a decimal. You're more than welcome to leave it as a fraction. You should get that x equals 4.8, or you can leave it as 24 over 5. All right, so this is it. We're done teaching you this lesson. This is a little bit of an extension. See if you guys can figure it out. We'll talk in our groups when we get to class on this lesson.